five work, work camps. What, like to Chicago, Boston, Nashville, Grand Rapids. I mean, learned a lot. I initially, I mean, initially open up when you have, uh, you know, 26, 16, 17 theme and you play around with that. But I was doing some research on some page builders. was really excited because even though I know how to code, I like, I think long term, I'm going to be more involved in the sales and business development. What page builder did you play with? So I was playing with the free one. I forget what it was called. It was the most popular one. Elementor and you were both that free one, and they didn't use the free one. I didn't touch it. Free one. I was thinking about Beaver and never used it. Um, I eventually, what did I use? Oh, Visual Composer. Uh, I I was networking and I found I met somebody who you know was building websites like us, and he he gave me a few projects. And he was using like the uh, what's it called? Is that one more Is that one more there's a free version, and then there's 49 for Pro, 99 for three sites, 199 for limited sites per year. Excellent. Hey guys, thanks for coming here. Um, I mean, I just went by and so we're on YouTube, so everybody <laughs> watch the cues. Anyway, um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about a couple of projects I did recently, and you know, I like to like we lower the threshold to getting into. WordPress and WooCommerce. So I think, um, you know, this next, this is, I have a little, I'm rebranding myself as Marketing Pretty. Um, so I'll be hopefully using that a little more and all. So um, yeah, I said, why WooCommerce and WordPress? I said, hey, you guys familiar with the market share statistics? Obviously, that WordPress is about um, one third of all websites. And we all know here that uh, WooCommerce is the leading e commerce platform now based on the Built with dot coms um, technologies of uh, view of e commerce. Um, so, why WooCommerce? You know, one I said, ownership of data. Obviously, you understand that. You know, you're not leaving your data out somewhere where they can turn it off and take it all away from you. In one big fell swoop. Um, the platform's super usable. Um, there's an article here by Rebecca Gill that she wrote in 2017. I guess it's getting a little dated. But it's a really nice review of. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna. I can hop over to her. Um, here, if it's gonna show here, I might have to cast this again here. But this is her article here. Okay, so she has an article. Uh, I'm gonna make this slide share available on slideshare.net. Okay, I'll make sure these notes are the notes from there are available in this meetup notes. Okay, so I'm um, just to put in the notes here. Additionally, um. A couple of clients I had, hey, reasons why people recommend to move off the platforms was so they could work with them with AdWords, so they could improve their SEO. Um, a couple of the products are import export products, which, which sounds like he's really familiar with the, those needs on an ongoing basis. And he rated in the user interface. And um, like I said, one of the things is you can't be scaling. So maybe for $3 a month, you can get a WooCommerce site up. You know, maybe to be um, fully PCI compliant, you have to spend $6 a month. You know, I'm hosting and use the PayPal plugin, you know, you know, some of the free plugins, and, and maybe um, have a business account with PayPal. And um, I do have some contacts at PayPal if anybody wants to reach out to me. I have a contact at Braintree, and he typically turns on those features for free, or at least at a, at a modest cost. So if you have anybody that is looking for a connection at PayPal, reach out to me, okay? And like I said, um, you can find my contact information and message me through the meetup platform. Okay, sure. Excellent. Um, here, so some business drivers. That's what I mentioned. Okay, the first case I'm just going to talk about is a company I work at, part time retail in Evanston. And they had an old open cart platform. Um, when I started at the store about three and a half years ago, they did, I didn't see a website, and then all of a sudden they launched it with open cart 1.5.6. And by the time they launched it, OpenCart 2.0 was already out. Now OpenCart 3.0 is out, and the website was fairly crippled. You know, they couldn't add any new pictures to the front banners of their website. You know, they promote sporting sports as clothing for Northwestern. So when Northwestern won a bowl game, they couldn't promote that new category merchandise or anything like that. Yeah. Yes, Canvas gear. They ran on the. Right on Sherman, yeah. 
So, um, so we have those issues of managing the website and flexibility and merchandise, you know, and then we don't have any really capability of any doing any marketing or anything with the platform at all. So one of the options was to upgrade it to open cart 3.0, but then I just thought, you know, for the minimal amount of effort to move it to the commerce was working. Um 2500 or so. Yeah, I'll show you the stats. I have the actual um, open cart um quotes in the actual from migration stuff. Another client is a um, Persian rug dealer. He's on Squarespace. But one of the problems with Squarespace I'm seeing is that all the products are actually product pages, just like the other pages of their website. So they don't have a lot of flexibility to redisplay them. I mean, there's ways to do that, but it's really not a friendly platform. Um, and one of the big objectives, which we're in the midst of finishing this, this launch, is to Import and export product to other dealer sites. So he, and honestly, he has sold zero product on Squarespace. Zero. But he does work with some other dealer networks similar to like eBay's. And if you want to use All Export Pro to push stuff out in batches to those other platforms. And so we're on the verge of doing that and have that flexibility there. So um, I just wanted to talk about what are some of the considerations? What are you going to think about before you do? Migration and then just talked about this. And then there's all possible ones. All this link juice, they call it. You know, I'm asking all that's built into the products, your blog posts, your, all your website pages, all those URLs. So, um, what do you do? You make a sitemap. You, you export a, a sitemap of an external sitemap of what you have, whatever platform you're on. Maybe you're moving from one from open card, from squares, wherever you are, you can get an external sitemap. Or you can do this manually and at least map your key pages. Yoast SEO for WooCommerce mm -hmm. fixes all of that for 89 bucks. It gives you a snippet mm -hmm. of pages the way Yoast and WordPress. Have you ever used Yoast SEO? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so when, no, you're no. A, when you're in a blog post, you can put your, create your own snippet. You don't rely on Google, right? But it doesn't do it for WooCommerce. Okay, so you add it to WooCommerce and then it creates the product snippet. So you, you know you don't necessarily want it to use the first 22 or 40 characters, but it also automatically takes the title of the product and puts it in the title tag, which I was struggling with. Mm -hmm. and I was manually and just but if you're coming from the cart, like we talked about, or if you're coming from open cart. Or if you're from coming from Squarespace, there might be a different you know, URL to each product. So you need to, so well, card to cards can do that redirection, create all those redirects right. for you, okay? And then do charge for that. It's not too expensive. And, um, or you can figure out a way to actually do some type of a spreadsheet and map those links yourself. So that's, there's two ways to do it, you know. Um, for one project, I'm going to finish mapping them myself. That didn't think it was worth it. And, and their category tree was kind of messed up. So they <laughs> indexing. So I went and fixed. I went to the website before the migration and I tried to fix most of the way the product was organized under categories because it was messed up. Yeah. And then after the migration, I had to go back and fix it up too in the, in the search based one. So those. Redirects aren't that useful anyway. Are you going back in the search console looking for parallel cores? Not yet, because we haven't I haven't watched the new site. So okay. we'll go. I do keep track of that. So I do, I do keep track of that on all those projects. On um, major page links, I've seen every category links, image links, search links. So you guys are all familiar with what we're trying to do here. That's awesome. So the main thing, Mitch, is you guys are familiar with some of the migration tools that are out there? Yeah. Well. Uh, are you Man manual just inserts SQL my SQL statements. <laughs> <laughs> right. so, the two most popular ones are WP All Import and now WP All Import Pro. So there's a free version. I haven't used the free version too much. Have you? The WP I All used Import free version, and then in order to make everything work, at least for me, I had to use the WooCommerce widget, uh, which is an additional like, thirty or forty bucks. The WooCommerce add-on to so, all yeah. Yes. Yes. And, um, I'll try that actually. Now that I, I thought it was just data and that integration, it's everything, right? Really? I'll, I'll try. 
is amazing. So we'll allow you, but Updraft is a WordPress tool, all right? Yeah, I don't think it runs on any of Right, but it doesn't run on, you can't export a Squarespace site and, and use Updraft. You can't use a open card or a Shopify site to get to with Updraft. I don't know. All think. these do? Yeah, these are these are products that allow you to migrate from one platform to another one. Good. If, if, to kind of clarify, Zencard, the URL is product1234.php. Mm -hmm. WooCommerce is product1234.html. So you have to tell Google to redirect from the old URL to the new URL. Otherwise, you're going to get a 404 error when they navigate to that page. Right. They explain that okay? Correct, yes. So that goes with all the that's the challenge. So that's the link juice that these sort of URLs have out in the world. You don't want to lose that. You don't want to lose that. Get the Moz, M O Z toolbar for free. Just sign up and you get it for free. And you can actually see domain authority, right? And it gives you some more information on every site you go to. So, and, and that's on a per SERP. Visit so you know I look at that a lot when I'm looking for competitive keywords. Cool. I'm just gonna try and uncast what I was doing here and maybe cast my um let's go back here. Maybe I can cast my whole desktop here and that way we can walk around to a few different things here. So cast available sources, desktop here. Let's see if this cast here. No, this is before. Oh man, I was casting time before. Should have messed it up, huh? Get over here. Okay. There we go. All right, can I get over to here? No. Hmm. I can catch one more, guys. Here. Okay. Is this casting my whole desk out there? I'm not sure. I'm going to you guys. Share the entire screen. There we go. I think this will be good here. Oh, oh well. We're still back. Okay, here's the card to card. So they allow you to migrate from pretty much any e commerce platform here. And the pricing is very reasonable. You can see here, done. And then you can pick the two. And the nice thing about them is that they allow you to do a free trial migration. WooCommerce is going to be our destination here, and then they're going to walk you through setting it up. So it's super, super easy. Have you done a few trials? I did one trial, and that's what I backed off because they charge you by the entity. An entity is an order, a customer. So I have 150,000 entities. It was going to be $1,500. So I moved everything with import, um, all import pro. That took a while, but I finally got that. And I'm going to use them for the just to move the products because for an extra 50 bucks, so I'll be at 200 bucks. They will do the 301 redirects, which I don't want to hand map 4,000 redirects, which is they would take a month. So I'm going to let them do that. Smart. So it's a nice service, and, and they cover every cart on the planet, and they do it every they're experts, basically. Yeah, it's on demand. You know, and once you start going, it's an hour, two hours, three hours. You can buy insurance if it fails, they'll do it again. Or like three weeks later, I'm not ready yet. But I did want to mention that both options have to be monitored. So, um, both the car to car migrations I did had issues. Okay? And I'm going to just talk about one thing as we go into it. Like that first issue here, I said, oh, issues with car to car, attention to detail. Why don't you try the debug, okay? So be pay very close attention to your free trial. Because you're going to be working out different parts of this project at the same time. So the first time I did a cart-to-cart -cart migration, I didn't notice each one of the products had six pictures. 
And I didn't know this because I didn't know the products that well because they're version products and they're, the pictures are rather complicated. I didn't notice that the pictures were being, being mixed up. Okay? And I ran the migration. It was pretty inexpensive. It was like 59, 69 bucks. And then they said, and I said, hey, you guys, these pictures don't match. And they said the reason was that the folders on Squarespace they were in allowed them to have the same file names. And when they migrated to WordPress, the file names overwrote themselves. Okay. So I had to pay an extra $59, big deal. And they read, went and re ran it for me and created, they had appended each file picture name with uh, its own unique character codes. Okay. So that was just, you have to be really cautious. Okay. Um, the second one, the, the first client, I said, called issue one was multiple redirects. When they did the migration, they even made a redirect on the home page, took me somewhere else. Even the home page had a redirect somewhere else. Exactly. <laughs> well, not <even> but <laughs> luckily it was just to uh, to a development site, you know. Sure. But so they went and cleaned all of them up and no extra charge. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. So just be very thorough in looking at the test migrations. It takes a few steps to set up a test migration. You may have to install cart to cart um, plugin or whatever their add on into your dump, into your root folder. And so they can talk to each other. This is a connect mechanism that goes on for the migration so they can keep the data flow going smoothly. Um, so, hey, why didn't I use something else? Why didn't I use all import pro? Because I tried all import pro in Squarespace and I couldn't. Get the images to migrate. I tried it multiple times, and the images weren't readily available. And I just couldn't move them. I had the URLs. I had all the URLs for all the images, but they wouldn't. They weren't available for migration. You have to add two lines of CSS. I reached out to all on board Pro. And <laughs> yeah, really? they, yeah, they gave me two lines okay. on that one page on the bottom. I said, Additional CSS, and I don't code. And they said just. Oh yeah, copy and paste this and put it in that box, and all the images showed up. These wouldn't even import. These wouldn't even migrate. So I think it was a, I think it was an availability issue in the cloud with Squarespace. I, know I, can talk yeah, about. I don't know Squarespace. Now that I have, well, I bought the Alton Pro license. Uh, let me tell you. Where it had the Where to look at? I think they're relatively close. I don't know. No, no, they're overseas. Are they? Yeah. I think they're European. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think they're yeah. in Europe. 24 hours to get an answer. Yeah. I think we're going to see But the license is, you can give it away. It's, it's unlimited to anybody. So if you need it once, you're. I don't know about giving it away. We're not going to give things away. But yeah. it's, a, it's an unlimited site license. So, yeah. so it's not even I'm going to bring it for some the chats. Like I mean, so this is fifty-nine dollars in one case. The other one, you know, was three hundred forty dollars for migration. It was a big deal. So even in that case, two, it was one hundred twenty-eight bucks or seven hundred bucks, which is I think pretty reasonable. The amount of time that anybody would have done as a developer to get this done would have been an issue. Here, here's the actual bill for the larger migration. So total entity seven thousand seven hundred forty-eight. Okay, three hundred twenty-three product categories. Six manufacturers, 2,100 products. Or not even the toy stores. That's his categories. How he has categories and subcategories. Yeah, so this ended up being 307 bucks plus 30 bucks for insurance. 340 bucks. Okay. And for variable products, which is a little more time consuming, anyways, right. there's that a pretty reasonable amount of money to spend. So, um, and here, and this included $59 for them to do the redirects. So prior to doing the prior to doing the migration, you need to install a few plugins. Um, their redirection engine works with the uh, free redirection plugin. That was no big deal. Their manufacturers works with a free plugin called uh, WooCommerce Brands Lite, which actually uses the same taxonomy as the WooCommerce Brands plugin. So um, it's interchangeable. And Yes, there was a plugin they wanted that we needed to install for the customers too. And I think there's one other plugin I used was a um, uh, sequential orders plugin too. Do you use these plugins you just want to be done? Redirection I left in there because um, those, this 
It's holding all the redirects. Not too much. You got a new category called scaffolding plugins. Just use them for scaffolding, and then go to yeah. Yeah, and then when you're done, I delete them because all import pro does not work with Elementor. It'll we'll shut it down. So I just shut everything off. Turn on those plugins, scaffolding, move everything, and they go away. Here's the other migration price is seventy six dollars plus another fifty nine bucks. So one hundred and twenty seven hundred twenty eight bucks. For 700 items with six images each. So they're doing the galleries too. Yeah. So, so um, they, they don't count that as part of the, they don't do a count on images. So maybe they, we shouldn't tell them about that. But that's something they, they might do. Yeah. Um, it's so, too late. Yeah. So, so here's why a page builder. So um, you've been using a page builder, Tony. You've been using one in terms of image. So here's a major one. You can build your Divi Elementor. Brian has a page builder. Brad also has a bunch of uh, marketing uh, add-ons too that are quite popular. WP Baker is now a visual composer and team of five. Um, so why did I think Beaver Builder? Carrie Dills did a blog post. I don't know if you know Carrie, she's a very uh, popular and well-noted uh, developer in the Genesis framework. Okay, and um, Genesis is a framework. And it's used to build websites. So you have a bunch of features built into the framework that helps you build pages, but not a page builder. So this is for it's coding teams. More lightweight, but it's more. There's a lot of templates, right? Well, um, we're not here to talk about Genesis too much, but real quickly, Genesis is a framework in where there's a Genesis parent theme, and Genesis, if you you can create child themes. So when you use the Genesis framework, you do all your styling in the child theme. The parent theme gets updated on a continual basis, and that's what they call making it future-proof. In fact, um, Carrie is doing, Carrie is doing a, a presentation on February 27th, I'm going to run up here, and it's going to be on future-proofing your website with Genesis. Because that parent theme keeps, to be up, keeps updating. The child theme is where all the personalization is. Okay. But the parent theme has very readily usable hooks, and you can readily create action places, and you can create widgets, areas, and very easily style pages. Okay, so you have to be relatively you know, adaptive doing that. Um, so I so my page builder. I started when I did Beaver Builder. I had a license. I met the owner of Beaver of Builder at the that I was working at. <laughs> And he uh, gave me one year for free, and the next year I, I think I paid for the license for those, and they're like 60% off. So the um, Beaver Builder license, the Pro license is $199, which includes the Beaver Builder theme and the Beaver Builder Pro license. And the Beaver Builder themer, which is another product, is an additional $150 retail. Okay? A lot of money. And the renewals are 40% off. But I'm telling you, so 120 renewals for the page builder, but it's only the insights. Sure. Those are limited sites. So you can just say, one of the things that's been commented, both Elementor and Beaver Builder, are both our, our page builders where if you turn them off, you don't end up with a lot of net unnecessary show codes and a mess behind. From what I understand, Elementor is in that same family too. Right. Yeah. Biggest problem with it's a good thing and a bad thing with Elementor is that there's now 20 or 30 companies that are doing add ins mm -hmm. for Elementor. So, I mean, if you, you can, if you want to check out Elementor, you can get there for free. Just put Elementor to add plugins, but you'll see another 20 different plugin, ancillary plugins that'll do this. Like their, their nav menu is incredible. Um, you know, I can build a nav menu now in 30 minutes with nested sections. At, you know, complete with carts and, and, and phone numbers, and like, it's just really slick. And everything is templated, so you can save it and move it over to another site, so you're not reinventing the wheel. So, it, but most of those plugins you're talking about are free add-ons. Yeah, secondary add-ons. In addition, there's a whole bunch of paid add-ons for Elementor as well. Right. Same thing for Beaver Builder, there's a whole bunch of paid add-ons as well. There's only new. Add ons for Elementor and also add ons for Beaver Builder by the same company. I couldn't have built my site without the, <clears throat> it's the UAE 
anion category filter, which actually mm -hmm. is WooCommerce doesn't let you store categories. I mean, you can, but you can't really specify it. So with the, this this category builder, you can actually call them and then sort ascending, descending, alphabetical. Uh, it gives you a lot more control, which you don't have with WooCommerce. So the next topic I just want to talk about is the themes. So um, recently, there was a presentation at the Northside WordPress Meetup Group about how to pick a theme. And I made a comment that I thought the theme is dead. And to some extent, I think that is, I still think that's the case. So, but to launch a website, you still need to have a, a theme to build on top of. Okay, so why, what does that theme give you? It gives you a lot of options in the customizer. It gives you some general styling options. And it may give you some nice page templates. And so you have to decide what theme you're going to use. Um, for the first project, I've been using Genesis Framework for a while, and there's a, I happen to have a lifetime time subscription to the Cobalt Apps family of products, all the products, including Dynamic Website Builder. And Dynamic Website Builder is a child theme for Genesis. And I was just comfortable with using that. And I'll be honest, I was lazy because they had all of the nested product category styling done. And you can build it out of the box didn't, and a couple other things didn't. So um, you guys are kind of familiar with how the child theme can have WooCommerce folders inside of it, and the child themes WooCommerce folders have additional styling for WooCommerce. Now all themes have added all the styling for WooCommerce all the time. And how I have not. Have not, have not. Okay. So I asked, I actually opened up a case of Beaver Builder and asked them to make sure that the next time they release the Builder Builder routine, that they add the styling for WooCommerce product categories. So that when you have a hierarchical product categories of the nested product categories, that it shows up nested. They just didn't do that. Um, the next product, uh, the other products I've done, I start to use a Beaver Builder theme. I think in some future projects, I'm going to try and use the Genesis theme with just the sample child theme. So again, Genesis is the parent theme, the child theme, and, and even when you're doing your website, you know to build the child theme. I don't. You don't. You should, okay? Are you, I'm using Astro Pro, and it's giving me so much stuff off the top, I don't bother. But even Astro Pro has a child theme builder. Right. Okay? Right. And I recommend that you do that because the next version or revolution of the Astro Pro comes out, you should install it. Right. And it'll overwrite anything that you did custom in the Astro Parent theme. So it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but it will. It will. So if you use Astro Pro, you're going to find it coming today, okay? All right. All right. Well, what is going on? That's from the, the people who make a frame. There's a brain storm, is it? I think the name of the company. Yeah, yeah right. Storm. Yeah. So I highly recommend the child themes. Always. Always, 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 always. So I've heard that. So I'm, I'm a little confused still. Go ahead. Because I'm a friend who gave me Genesis. Mm -hmm. Just had uh, this initial sign I had, so I put Genesis for the Genesis child theme. But I didn't realize it was a framework. I thought it was a, a theme of the child So the term framework. Kind of is a all big bucket of the word, okay? A framework kind of is like, hey, what kind of scaffolding do I like to build my websites with? You know, what kind of starter kits do I use when I start a website? So one of the starter kits is using the Genesis parent theme because it has all these hooks, all these widget areas, all these column classes, everything built into it, okay? So the if someone allowed you to use the Genesis parent theme and Genesis child theme, when you should be updating the Genesis parent theme on a regular basis. Right. Okay. And that's the framework. That's the framework is the Genesis parent theme. Okay. Does that make sense? So Genesis has an all pro bundle that is the framework. And all these child themes, okay? So you know that all the customization that makes your website look beautiful is in the child theme. 
And the parent theme is where the magic happens that interfaces with WordPress. Right? And what's the difference between the framework and the parent theme? Uh, the, the framework is just the fact that that's the structure that works for them to continue to update it. So this framework is nice because it has a lot of built-in tools for building websites. Okay. Right? Well, hasn't Genesis been around since 2006 or seven? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so what's happening now is like with uh, Elementor, mm -hmm. they're familiar with layers. Oh, yeah. Elementor just bought layers. So now they're building their own things, mm -hmm. again, hopefully to future-proof your site because they're bringing in a lot of novices that are able to, like me, have superpowers with design. But I'm actually, so on the 27th of February, if you want to go, there's here's a link. I'll make sure this is available. Gary Dills is going to be presenting on future-proofing your site with Genesis. Sure. I don't know what the project is going to be about when it's going to be building actual websites. I'll make sure this link is available on our on the notes for this meetup. Sure. I don't know, you know. One of the things is Genesis can also be a platform for page photos. So are you using Gutenberg too? I haven't really done anything much in Gutenberg yet. I haven't. Just teeny bit, teeny teeny bit. I haven't built any websites for it. So I'd be happy to go through and show you some of the different little modules you can. I plan to do that. We're going to do a little demo of a little website. But okay. Um, there's a ton of modules, text, image, icons, rows. It's a row structure. It's probably similar to Elementor to some degree. Um, responsive field display control, so you can determine what fields show up on what size devices. And so I use that quite a bit for search for search fields and also for the actual. Um, Sidebar, whether or not the sidebar shows up after the products or before the products. So I have the sidebar showing up on the left on full screen images, and I have both that sidebar is hidden on smaller devices, and the sidebar at the bottom shows up on smaller devices. So it's pretty nice to be able to have that responsive control. Um, also, you can build archive page modules and grab short codes. I'm going to show you how to do that too. Um, you can build a WooCommerce modules, there's a ton of them. Layer NAS short codes, single product modules, product archive modules, add to cart modules. We're well, going to demo some of these. Um, there's Beaver Themer allows you to build page templates. And so you can build 404 templates, you can build product category archive templates, page templates, search templates, any type of template you like. Header templates, footer templates, and it's pretty strong. So um, I think it's a worthwhile add on. And we'll do a little demo. So I just want to go over some helpful plugins here that I used. I happen to be really lucky and um, get a hold of the WP Forms license early on when they first released the product. So I have an ultimate license. And so I'm grandfathered in a super, super big deal. So I get access to all of their add ons on unlimited sites. I'm, I also picked up a silver free slider license. So Elementor must have a slider option to a plugin. What do you mean? So I'm sorry, Elementor must have a slider module. Oh yeah. Yeah. So if you know what it is too, it also little, has a pop-up module now. Yeah. So little free slider has is a premium slider, and so they are known in e-commerce world for being one of the faster sliders out there. I like the smart slider uh, three. I have a couple other products I use as well, the tab manager, which has been really good to uh, display one or two tabs as opposed to having people go to tabs just to display one tab at the bottom of the page. You'll see a WP menu card displays a really nice way to display the ongoing shopping cart to customers. This is a one little plugin I just came across that they will need to replace. Is anybody familiar with that? Does anybody use Sharp Pixel? Try it. Yes. Yeah. Conflicts with W3 Rocket now. They're using stuff. Mm -hmm. So, what happens with Short Pixel is a, a image optimization platform. Um, I happen to pick up a subscription. I'm a big fan of AppSumo. AppSumo has lifetime deals. And so, I bought a lifetime deal on Short Pixel. And um, when Short Pixel is installed on the Psycho platform, I don't know if you have access to the um, SD optimizer on your VPS? I suppose so. 
So Cyclone has an optimizer plugin that that uh yeah, it should be optimized. Yeah. 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 I like it. I mean, oh you're just rocking to say. What's today? So Tuesday. on Friday, on last Thursday, I spent three hours and I installed one at a time six cache plugins and six cache plugins with optimizers, including SG optimizer, which is how I ended up with W3. Okay. But that's not going to be the same on all sites. It's different. Yeah. I'm so confused how you guys pick your plugins if you're going to kind of you start with one that there's two at a time. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not not the yeah, that's, that's I have 70 plugins. Like I said, it was 40 hours over three days to get the site to work without crashing the site. So if you want to work with other stuff, is right? Like, so I would take because you started in one direction, so like he started a theater of whatever. Right, right. you're going to have a totally different setup. Those different two plugins are, I think, are pretty agnostic. The page builder ones, I think, is some of the other. Other elementary is miserable. They won't oh, really well with Cloudflare wow. unless you put in three page rules. Oh, really? okay. And then disable rocket loader and then disable railgun. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> I don't want to come. Uh, so I just want to say Short Pixel is the same company that is the publisher for Enable Media Replace. And Enable Media Replace allows you to actually replace images in the media gallery. Media library. So instead of um, instead of having to upload and delete, you can actually replace the media item, and it'll be a good place for the actual products too. Right. Pretty nice. sweet. Pretty and sweet. when you try to re-upload, it'll change the name. Uh, you know, right. Dash one. You can actually change the name when you do re-upload. You do the oh. media replace too. So you can take advantage of that and name the file as well. Uh, yeah, I don't have to do like the second re-upload. So another really important thing I just want to make sure everybody's aware of having a security strategy, okay? Which is a backup strategy. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty fond of incremental backups per order. Okay? So um, as opposed to somebody does a lump sum backup. So um, the product I'm using right now is WP Time Capsule. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. It's fine the same people that do within a WP uh, a map management platform. Another thing is hardening the site with some security plugins. Um, I had some malware on some sites, and I was pretty lucky with a, with a, a plugin here. Oh, Something. What? Some what? malware on the site. How did that happen? Pardon me? How that happen? Because you know, it was a shared hosting platform, and someone else had a, had a developer from India that had credentials to it, and I, that's what I think it happened. And then, you know, I didn't. I didn't remove her access to it. I haven't had a problem in three years with WordPress. But I don't have. WordPress is not cheap though, so you only have a couple sites, right? Now. So I have. So I have. So I have. So That's why I use IT security all the time. I was using the same time that we're security and brute force firewall plugin. So I had luck with it. It actually cleaned the malware off these sites. And so I gave the guy 30 bucks and they gave me the unlimited license to install it and do auto updates on these other sites. I use Jetpack and WallPress, but I had a big issue with um, with YouTube. They suspended our channel 350 videos long. So YouTube? No, yeah, YouTube. Big problem. And so I collected about 210 videos, mm -hmm. and uh, Jetpack will host your videos for nine bucks a month unlimited. So, really? Yeah, and it's much quicker. Man, uh, YouTube is how they serve them. I just have to, I'm still uploading them. Yeah, because I've noticed that with videos, whether it's YouTube or uh, what's it other Vimeo. Yeah. There's, when you're trying to do speed optimization, those take a long time to load. They add to the page speed. Try lazy load. There's a plugin for that. Yeah. That's a, that's a good one. But, uh, but yeah, I'm in love with uh, Jetpack. What's the first thing? Snapshots. You know, 24 7. Every change, there's a snapshot, and every 24 hours, it backs off, backs up to Jetpack off site. And you can actually use it, and I've done it to migrate the site. So it's on Facebook or YouTube? What's that? Yeah, on Facebook. And there's a. I never told you my, my YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah there is a rumor out there that, that Jetpack uses Akamai. That what? The Jetpack is using the Akamai platform. That's a rumor. I'm not sure if it's true or not. They're now offering 
SEO, Google Jetpack, and back and forth. Because when you're, you know, who, what do you use from Yoast? What do you use from Jetpack? You know, how do you do services? So, but the last uh, meetup we had was about security by Chris. Um, he said that he was, he said he had a problem with the application firewalls, and I talked to him for the last time I saw him at the meetup. And what he said by application firewalls is he didn't want them to make you complacent. So I, I believe application firewalls are another important layer of your security plan, but it makes sure certainly you're using the other layers. So whether it's two-factor authentication, whether it's hard to your site, you know, et cetera, go back to security, whether it's another platform work plans. But uh, so application firewalls, I believe, are a helpful add-on, but don't become complacent with them. So. Here. Um, I just want to say issues and experts here. Did I miss the slide here? Yeah. I just want to say some issues. So this guy came from the first case was a guy that's been on open cart 1.5.4, you know, or whatever, an old version of it forever, and nothing broke because but nothing worked either. So we rolled out WooCommerce twice. We've already had little half years of WooCommerce updates. And I'll be honest, it's because I didn't do the updates in staging first. But so now I have a staging environment where I'm doing all the work in, but still, if the product doesn't improve, you're not going to have any problems. So, one issue was during the holidays, it was in December, WooCommerce pushed out an update where people did not have access to seeing a total of their orders in the upper tabs of their order page. Yeah. And so, you could look at each tab yourself and find out the stages of your orders, but it, it didn't show. Properly, then recently, WooCommerce, the PayPal plugin, WooCommerce's automatic version of the PayPal plugin was disabled. It pushed out a bunch of PHP code in your website. It's nothing. Yeah, it's really bad news. So, how are they so good? They're not good, they're just popular. Okay, so I, know, I just want to say next steps, I'm going to be able to be the real routine for a couple projects. Um, I'm working with uh, all import pro products and do some batch imports. I've had a couple imports that uh, I'm working on. I'm going to be working on product exports to dealer networks, I mentioned. For that other client, use some network documentation, product schema, SEO, and a newsletter for this other product. Um, Clunch manifest for schema, 37 bucks a month. Clunch manifest. They give you 10 sites and you can upload. You down to you know the, the size of the owner's pecker. You can put that in. I mean, that <laughs> granular. How do you use them for all four thousand bucks? I hit once they're in, mm -hmm. they will do a feed for me on their site on huh? Punch Manifest, and it's nothing short of brilliant. Huh? It's fifteen bucks a month for all those products. Well, thirty-seven no, thirty-seven bucks a month to have them sit there, okay, mm -hmm. per site. I, I apologize for ten sites. Okay. They're working on a new program, and it's going to be three or four hundred bucks, but they'll do an initial feed, and that way I will have schema for life through them. This and is schema specifically for e commerce, also just general, in general. Both. You know, so you can. If do, Yoast doesn't do the schema. Hey guys, here's my contact information. One, I don't my phone number if I'm ever get hold of me, too. Okay. Um, I get the slides up on slideshare.net. We have a Facebook page, we have a YouTube page. If you guys have a little bit of time, I'll just do a little demo of some of the sure. things I did on the website here. If I can cast that page properly here. Let's see. If so with schema, because when I type my website name, I want to see like the six categories under it, right? Okay, okay. That's, those are site links. Uh -huh. And up until about three years ago, you could tell Google exactly what you wanted to say. And Google said, no, nah, we're going to sign for you. So what you want to be very careful of is the content below the links in all your categories. Cool. They're going to pick the categories. You get to pick the content. Hey guys, here's the website. This is um, Campus Gary on Evanston. This was an open curve. I'll be honest, I, all I did on I have to do this kind of on a few products is reduplicate the prior site. This was pretty close to the prior site. We changed the screen out of the for the holiday 2019, which is, um, when the request you went to this past year. Oh. Yeah. No blog. <laughs> no blog. No, um, 
No blog, sorry. <laughs> the newsletter's next, yeah, blog newsletter next. So what I do want to see, I'm um, going to just, so here in, um, if I go to the small version of the site here, this is now, the search tab goes across the top. So can you, in Beaver, you're using Beaver Biller? Can you make adjustments for desktop, mobile, and um, tablet, and have have it render for all three differently? Yes. So, so um, mm -hmm. so I thought I pardon me, guys. I made a mistake here because I wanted to. Um, Look at the header inspector here. So I was looking at the home page here. So if I go here to the view builder into the header here, right? So um, here's the header. So there's this is a component of the header here that um, I have showing up on small devices only. Okay. All right. Good to know. And here's I can show. Here's a different. Views of it. I'm sorry, so I can get this out of the way here. Here's the different views of this site here. Okay. Nice. Okay. Unfortunately, it's showing all the tabs here, but um, yeah, it's in the full screen. What are you getting two search bars? Pardon me? What are you getting two search bars? Because this search bar here, I was showing you here, right. is only visible on small oh, devices. Gotcha. Okay. And so here, here, this was only available on small devices. Okay. okay? And then, and this search bar here is available on large and medium devices, okay? So I just figured it would be nicer to have that thing set and full across. Sure. You know? Yeah, I'm yeah, big enough search bar. Yeah. So that's what I, so I just wanted you to see that. What, what are you using for site search? WooCommerce product search right now. How about yourself? Do find her. I've always used, like, if you go into my current website, I'm using Solar, S O L R, which is open source, which is used by NASA and Best Buy, and it costs a lot. And I don't like it all that much, but it was a one time fee because I used to pay 400 bucks a month for site search. Dofinder for 35 bucks a month is an API, and so I control the filtration. And mm -hmm. you go to weight it and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's sweet for 35 bucks a month. I did not care for the WooCommerce site search. I've heard some really good things about Elasticsearch. I've heard good things about that too. I just stumbled yeah. upon this. I think they're closer to like 99 bucks a month for the problem. I didn't want to pay that much. Okay. And the same token, um, the footer is just as easily adjustable. You know, I'm just going to go back to this site here. Analytify. Is that for Google Analytics? Yes. Look cool, cool. Um, what I wanted to do is just go to um. Yeah. Click. I'd like to see what happens when you click shop. Shop. So um, shop takes us to an archive page here. The product archive page is showing subcategories. Gotcha. Yeah. This is the way his site was set up, and um, it's really what I'm really happy about about this guy's implementation is that. He's become so excited about WooCommerce and really working on his website that he spends about five or six hours every day cleaning up the website now. All the old images, any new products, cleaning up the categories. So here's where the here's where this little hierarchy, hierarchy is here. That's formatting for the hierarchy, which is not available on other things. It's not that hard to do, but I was lazy, so I just used this thing because it worked well for them. <laughs> Are you using heat maps? I'm not yet. <laughs> Are, you? Are you? I live by heat maps. Which heat maps? Right now I'm using Lucky Orange on both the live site mm -hmm. and the uh, um, and the dev site, the live dev site. And for ten bucks a month, you get ten thousand page views, and which includes um, not only heat maps but video so screen capture. So. If you look at the two sites, my I, I've moved around my um, um, 
parent categories significantly. They used to be alphabetized. I don't do that anymore. It's more pop popularity, right? Right. Because you saw they were going and scrolling down. Yeah, but they was just after watching all the heat maps. When you were watching heat maps, did you have to modify your like uh, for terms, privacy, any of those kind of documents no. that you're monitoring people? Screw that. Okay. Yeah, I just, you know, because you don't have to tell people you're doing that, and I'm not going to share the information. The school will know, right? Right. You know, I'm GDPR. Uh, compliance is to the best of my knowledge. Yeah. Um, so who cares? Yeah, I'm not strong on the term side. I need to study about that. Yeah. So there, there's a GDPR module or plugin, and and then I just found some boilerplate and I just did a search and replace, and then it was mine. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I did want to show you guys some of these data layouts here. Um, this is uh, the this is the femur layout for. This is one called, it's called specific product category show subcategories. So, could you would you share your conversion rate? Right? <laughs> yeah. Besides two, yeah. What's that? Besides two, right? Zero. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> are you tied to Google Analytics? Or you, so what kind of traffic are you getting? Just take a look here. So the dash line set here. Besides, good questions. Is there? <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to find this out so you can see. Did the analytics here is actually here? Did he go with an Notify instead of Monster Insights? Pardon me? This is a weekly, so you want to do for 30 days? That's 30 days here. Oh. This is a small site, you know? You see? You're not getting any traffic. Here, here's 30 days, 6,700 six, views, 700 sessions, 700 visitors. So we're going to 7.62 pages. Which is a really unfortunately they have to look at a couple of pages to buy something. That's what you know. <laughs> no, that's a good uh, 12, you know, 13,000 pages, just not get, not get start. But without your blog, you're not getting any. Yeah, I understand that. So, what I want, yeah, go ahead. Are you uh, tied into Search Council? Verified? Why is the page of blogging to Plus, that's where you get all your traffic. That's where I get all my traffic. Because you're helping them out right now. Oh, yeah. I have, I have single blog posts that are three years old. They get 5,000 visitors a month. Single blog posts. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm rearranging them and you know, I trim them and I make them all look pretty. But yeah, that's. So you can take the updating them? Always. Yeah. Yeah. Especially now with the new website. Mm -hmm. um, well, I still post. I have to move those over manually. You know, but if I'm referencing with crosslinks and I beef up an older um, um, Evergreen piece, mm -hmm. I go ahead and copy the, the HTML over to the new site as well. I'll add, you know, I'm adding new new uh, video mm -hmm. and all that. Just before I forget, you said you're going to start email marketing. Who are you going to use? I don't know if I can catch them for a while. All right. Just a cautionary tale. Remember, you know, I love right? Three weeks ago, I put out a newsletter. 52 weeks a year on Sunday, doing seven years, I sent out a million emails a year. And my list is 22,000. They have something called Time Warp so that it becomes time zone agnostic. So it's delivered at 7 a.m. every Sunday morning, wherever you're on the planet, and you have to have it in within 24 hours. I have to be done by 7 a.m. Saturday. And I start drinking heavily on Saturday night, on Friday night. <laughs> Some, you know, I have to get ahead of the coffee. No, whiskey. <laughs> so, long story short, I'm sitting there and I'm about to deploy. I'm 10 minutes away from deployment. And I get, a, I'm in MailChimp and I get this message on the screen Omnivore, our automated spam bot, has detected language. And you can't send anything until we look at this, which will be on Monday. And we double our sales every Sunday because of this newsletter. So I ended up, I took a nap, sobered up, started about three, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and I tried to onboard. The problem is I have 22,000 emails. I went to eight different companies, and they wouldn't take the email list until Monday when somebody's there to look at it and get response in Poland. We were chatting. They let me onboard, and I... It took me another two hours to move all the content over and deploy. And just last night, 
I went to, you have an archive of, you know, I had 322 emails sent with them. And you have an archive to link to that. So and it was 167 bucks a month. I went to forever free. So I keep my archive, but I will. And I actually sent that post to um, get response and posted it on their Facebook page. I was stunned. I, I lied about that. It, it, that was scary. So, so the long-term solution, what would you go for? I, I would get response. Get and response. There's probably better ones. I don't like their interface, but I'm already here. And I got too much stuff to do. And you know, that was a five-hour cluster block, just yeah. scrambling. And plus, they're, they have the time zone thing, but they don't have the 24-hour restriction. So I can finish up Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. Which I know I'll finish up the camp, you know. Dan, you're sober by the time this is over. Oh no, I, I can get in I can I, I belong to a crazy campground, we have happy hour in the winter at three. So I can sit there and drink and finish things up and sell, you know, six or seven. So your response is a combination of CRM, landing page, and you know, six, six. combination of CRM and a CRM. No, they're just an ESP. They they have other products, and that's a whole other thing. I don't know if you've gotten into marketing and automation yet, I don't know. No, no. Yeah, well, I'm starting to hook up. I had Mailchimp done, and yes, why? You know, I've been doing this for so many months. But automation is when somebody comes to the site, or they haven't been to the site in 90 days. Okay, mm -hmm. well, they have history to all my e-commerce data, which is why I downloaded 90,000 orders. So, oh, you haven't bought this product in 90 days. Here's a 10% discount if you do. And then, you know, it's it happens nice. automatically. I don't have to. Think about that. That's what it is. That just prints money. Who is doing this? I'm going to use get response to them most likely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and basically it talks to your customers. I had it done. It was a much more expensive scheme, but I was getting you know 70 percent open mm -hmm. rates. And like I said, it added it added 10, 15 grand a month of revenue. You know? I, I wanted to just show you guys this email layout here. This is um, specific product category. Show the subcategories. Okay. So there's some of these other categories where I want to show subcategories. You can do this with WooCommerce only without a page builder. But if you're gonna use a page builder, this is really helpful. So for accessories, family, related, for all of these sub, for all these categories here, I'm just gonna show the subcategories. Sure. Okay. So it's just a really nice rule. So you guys know how to do this. This is just a really sweet way to build this layout. And then when you launch Beaver Builder, you're working on the layout itself. And you can see it here. And then if we, so these are, this is an archive layout because it's showing multiple things, okay? Multiple subcategories. I did want to show you guys, let's get on here. How long has this company been around, Campus Gear? Since a long time. Yeah, 90s, yeah. Uh, it could use a logo rework. Just so you know, this was the, um, this is a logo that the rich guy from India did for them. So I just read it, man. This was a, okay. Here's a, it's kind of a plus story. Come on. I did for that off of that. So, uh, what I did want to just do is go to a single product page here and just show you the capabilities of using, I'm going to go to staging here though, for some reason. Taking it back and forth from staging live. I don't want to be messing with the live site too much. Um, so I just want to go to the single product theme right out here. And so you can see some of the modules here, which is the basic choose an option. Here's a, an anti cart buttons here. But the reason I wanted to go to this page was to show you some of the modules that are available here for products. And if I use the text editor here, so I'm going to drag the text editor just anywhere, just temporarily. And what I want to see is show you is these are all of the things I can find short codes, short codes for. So I can find the short codes for the product title, for the post ID, for this excerpt. So there are all these things by comments number, I can insert the short code here. And then I can use this short code in another and anywhere else I'd like to build into my website. Okay. So I can add these short codes and find out 
randomly how I want to build. And I'll show you why I'm doing this here. So here's a short description. If I want to insert this short code here, so I got WPVB post code, so I Congress product short description. So if I wanted to use these short codes when I was building out the archive page, and I'm going to go to um, discover this here. We're just going to go to this uh, prior archive page here. I think it's here. Yep, good. So I rebuilt this archive page the other day because we needed to have the SKU. The SKU wasn't really available. And so we were using the SKU so we could find the pictures, so we could resize the pictures. Sure. We could look up pictures by SKU. And so what I just did was I went to the this femur layout here. And I went here and I built out this custom post layout here with shortcodes. So I was able to target every single little shortcut I wanted to to build out that, that layout with the uh, SKU number and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. And then I was able to style the edge card button purple and things like that. I just wanted to say it was pretty sweet to do it with this. That's all. Um, and yeah, you know, I think that's about it. I think I had to the presentation. Um, one thing that's interesting here is while you're building these pages, this here is a uh, filtered nav view here on the left. And while it's active, it's a filtered nav view here by filter by size. And before you actually publish the page, it actually spits out a bunch of garbage, okay? And I usually get errors in my application firewall. <laughs> Do you have problems with caching or it won't render until you block the cache number? Not typically, no, no. Yeah. That's the problem, no, I'm not sure. Yeah. So here, so I use the or the or query here on the size and things so more results if you're a third client and stuff. That's pretty cool. So you do optimize your site for speed with caching? Yeah, right now um, I'm using short pixels to optimize images and it has some image caching. And SiteGrounds do the SDK optimizer has some caching built into it as well. Yeah. I'm not using any additional Are you on caching. Cloud player? I'm not in our cloud player right now. No. Right. But you're on site now. Yeah. You can only get cloud player for one click. I mean, I, really I, mean, I did make a mistake and I didn't. Publish this with the uh, WW in front of it. I think that's much easier to use WW. Yeah, you have to force yeah. WWW. They will do it for you. Yeah. 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 That means that anytime anybody arrives at your site, they're going to go to a www site. It won't be HTTPS. Cloudflare. This is Cloudflare's protocol. Right. So that means there's going to be speed increase because because we did redirect. Well, Cloudflare is a CDN. Okay. And so Cloudflare CDN requires you to use www as a prefix to your website. Here, that's it. It's all the rule. That's, that's the rule. Yeah, they're providing a firewall. Um, yeah, they're providing a lot of security. I don't think they're providing a firewall on the free version. Are you paying for for yourself? I, I have to check. I'm on the paid version. Paid version has a firewall. Paid yeah. version is just see. Uh, the paid version on SiteGround is 15 bucks a month. If you go to um, Cloudflare, you get the same version for 200 a month. Jeez. But Cloudflare <laughs> doesn't acknowledge that you're a paying client on SiteGround, so that's a big problem. I'm trying to convince them, so you have to enlist at SiteGround. And the first guy on SiteGround didn't know about the www. I had to come back a week later and find out that was a requirement. All right. Wait, uh, so because my site is in www right now, because I know that's a big decision for SEO. You have to pick one and stick with it, right? Well, no. So your site is not secure. No, my site is HTTPS. Okay, 
That's different than www. Right. Okay. You know your domain or do you have to Yeah. There's, there's other benefits, especially if you get big, small site, it doesn't matter. But just Google, why should I uh, do www, course www, and you'll see a bunch of articles on that. Oh, so it's, 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 it's recommended? Yes, absolutely. And it's still in the HD access file. I don't know if it's as critical as you're saying, but it depends. Dependent on, yeah, Google it, because I was dubious, I'm convinced. Um, you're better off with it than without it. Does anybody here want to see anything people go from the modules or anything like that or familiar with it? Or you know, this is the pro version, so there's a bunch of um, saved modules. I'm sorry, standard. There's a bunch of templates here. Yeah, I guess. So do you have individual widgets? Yeah, so access to widget modules. So here's the standard modules here. Right. And um, and within these modules here are WordPress widgets. Right. Your yeah, WooCommerce widgets? Of course, yeah. So those are going to be in the WordPress widgets or the Woo ones. So if I go here to search, I go for Woo. You'll see here's um, standard WordPress widgets for Woo. Right. And here are some of the ones from the ultimate UABB's widgets for the Pro add-on. And here's the standard WooCommerce one here. So if you drag this over here. That's the only one? What's that? WooCommerce widget? No, they were all WooCommerce ones. These were all WooCommerce. They, they, they were all WooCommerce. These were all WooCommerce. These were all WooCommerce. These were all WooCommerce ones. These are standard WordPress Woo widgets down here. Product filters, product filters. These are all standard ones. This is product filters, attributes. This is product filter, price, product filter search, product search field, brands. Here's all. Aren't those just WooCommerce widgets? Yes, those are WooCommerce. From WooCommerce. Yes, yes, yes. So Beaver Builder doesn't bring anything else to the table. Beaver Builder has this one widget here, which is kind of like a universal one, okay? And when you open it up, it has all of these, all of these built into a single product, product page, multiple so products. Choose one. Add the cart button, okay? Right. Product ID. Gotcha. Okay. So there are more than just one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're all these, they're built into one universal you got one universal module. It's really not a module, it's a module, not a widget, okay? They call it. So this one module has our checkout order accounts, my accounts. You know. What about breadcrumbs? Yes. What are you using? I think I might be using theirs. I don't know. Let's go take a look here. So WooCommerce breadcrumbs are important. You need breadcrumbs. I'm having a problem because I'm WooCommerce in some pages and I'm Elementor in others. And so I'm using Elementor breadcrumbs on the Elementor pages and they're not matching up. And I'm not uh, so you're using native WooCommerce pages? I'm using both. Why? Because I don't like the um, native WooCommerce category presentations. I did not do what I had visualized that I was able to achieve. So why are you using them at all? Why are you using any native WooCommerce pages at all? Because of the nature of the categories. If I have categories, like currently on Windy City Parrot, we have, or dishes, we have three subcategories. We decided to combine them and just make it one large category. All we needed was a WooCommerce page. I didn't need any special page. So we're leaving it like that. As opposed to other categories where we have three categories where you can find this by brand, this by manufacturer, this by species. Um, what we try to sell is much more complex, but clothing for humans is the problem. There's only one species of humans. We satisfy, there's only one species of dogs. So dogs are quite so easy. There's 11,400 species of birds, and we satisfy about 750 of them. People don't realize that. This is a standard, it looks like it's a standard of uh, even though they're right from the module. Gotcha. Okay. I just use it on every page. All right, on every page. Okay. I don't think I've done it on the 404 page, man. It's created 404 page. I don't think I put it there. <laughs> it's not down on my pages or anywhere else. When you built this website, was already there. You came in the project later, right? Or did you build this whole website? I built the whole website in Peter Builder. The website was live and open card, totally over CMS. Um, yeah. Last question. What do you think of big commerce? I don't really know. I think it's it's um 
I don't. I haven't used BigCommerce. I've been WordPress. I hear Word. I hear BigCommerce is a good one. I hear BigCommerce is a big platform and a, a reliable one. But I haven't seen how it integrates WordPress and what the advantages are. Oh, it's a night and day. Okay, so what's that? No, no, no. Okay. It's it's now now it used to be like that. Three months ago, they released a plugin, BigCommerce for WordPress. The difference is that his site, my site, all your sites are sitting on a server somewhere, site ground always, and every time something happens, that server is going quick, right? And that's what you have to come to. Using the local database or whatever right. database we're referring to there. BigCommerce is S-A-A-S. -A -A you just need this tiny little application on your server, and they take care of everything else on their server. So, you know, you could get, instead of spending 250 bucks a month on a dedicated server, you can get a Go Geek, because all you're doing is basically just giving them a gateway to commerce. And as soon as I'm done with all this, I'm going to start building a big commerce store just to see. Um, and they only have 300 installs, uh, but they won't call you back. 300 installs of WordPress, right? Yeah. Because they're a big company already. Yeah, I know. They're huge. What does that mean, 300? That's awesome. Plugins, you know, like there's a, literally a million downloads for Elementor. Yeah. But for the big commerce, with their new WordPress, it's only 300. Oh, has it been tested? So you can test it and present on it. Yeah. yeah. So. But they don't call back. What's that? They don't call you back. They don't call you back. Call I back. called, they hung up. Well, I wanted on, you know, I wanted some questions. Yeah. Because I was getting frustrated so with the commerce. So do I start all over, which I really didn't want to do, but now I'll find out. They were at they were at working US. Were they? Yeah. So you know the children running companies, no offense. So it's good to look at so you're saying how old are you from that? How old are you? 25. The children, what you said. Yeah, I know. I'm I know. still I need I need help. I thought it's like someone who's under 30 and I told her the truck was a few. Got him. Oh, he got so angry. <laughs> this is what this is what that you're talking about. Big commerce for WordPress is 300 plus that in this place. Oh, yeah. But Big Commerce is a big company, though. Just other departments. They're trying to. They're, they're, they're have their own front end CMS for e commerce. Yeah. yeah, you can use them without WordPress. Yeah, I'm not at a point where I can have a client or have touched e commerce that extensively. So, but this is good. Are you going to have clients? Do you have clients? Yeah. In your job? Uh, outside. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've finished. Uh, well, for the longest time, I was working for other agencies mm -hmm. as a freelancer, but um, I did most of small projects, some speed optimization and fixing, and now I'm sending out proposals for clients. So if I, I looked in their repository for big commerce, the cart to cart, big commerce, the commerce migration plugin came in. Yeah, that's so, yeah. interesting. Do me a favor, put in uh, Elementor in the search. This is the fun part we use. Let's, let's find a plugin to use. Now start scrolling down, you'll see all the add ons, and these are all freebies. Essentially, yeah. Sure, yeah, but just because it says, says premium add ons, there, this may be a limited feature set of. Oh, it's very specific. Like premium yeah. add ons here. Let's go to more details on this one, just for instance. Yeah, I have six or eight, I'm using two. There's a lot of overlap and duplication. Do they buy all these plugins? What's that? The, everything you saw up there is free. What's that? No. Elementor only does their own stuff and they just bought layers, which is a paint uh, company. Um, all of these, these are all third parties. So you have to be very careful. So did you say that layers, you can kind of like a Photoshop idea, you can build your UI? No, Over Layers that. is a company that makes things. Okay. And four weeks ago, they sold the company mm -hmm. to Elementor. And Elementor isn't going to do anything. They're, just, they're part of the Elementor family, but I see Elementor getting into building things that are highly compatible with Elementor. So I went through several to get oh, right now, because right now it's, you have to build it all yourself. Right. Just well, you, see, you get the thing. Like, he uses... Genesis framework. I use Astro Pro. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't like Ocean WP. Um, and they're just like 2016. There, there were some conflicts. Like sometimes you'll start a page, and the page title won't go away. 
And I had a problem with that Ocean WP. When I went to Astro Pro, you go into elementary and say hi, page style, and it was gone. And then you can go into Astro Pro and you can remove the footer from some pages, you know, on a page by page basis, so you get a little more. Right. Well, look, if you turn on this, it says, um, oh, here, this is a premium, this is premium add on. Yeah. This is this 39 bucks. These are elementary add ons, they're not free. Okay. They're, this is three. This one here is the get premium add ons pro. So, uh, $39, you go right there. Yeah. $39 money in the chair. You guys heard of a file called toolkit.com? Very bad. How's that work? That's different too, right? I have not used it. It's a rabbit hole, but I heard it's very popular. People talk about it in the elementary community at Facebook. Hey, uh, Mitch, would you like to do a presentation for this meetup in a couple of months? Sure. Okay. I forgot I'll get the whole view. What's the topic then? You know, you know, it's, uh, we can't give it away right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, we, obviously, I'm a Gabby guy. Thanks very much for coming, guys. Yeah, um, you want to grab a soda or a beer or anything downstairs? Yeah. Where are you? That's my side. What chance to do? Brown line to the red line to the purple. How long does it take? Well, if you get down here, we'll be able to bring the paper line. This is the live stream. That's where I make the money, guys. Yeah, I, I'm in Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. So, I have to drive so what do you have over there, 906? Oh, yeah. wow. What's that? What do you have in 906? Western. Yeah. So, that's your, your, your. I have a store there. Okay. A retail oh, store. I'm in. Uh, I'm in. Uh, the next two months, then we're going. I'm at Kenzie and Carol. Oh, yeah. we're neighbors. Yeah, yeah we're neighbors. Right. We're Walton and uh, Rockwell. Okay. So, uh, so uh, yeah, we're moving. That's where you live, right? Walton and Rockwell. Right. And then this is That's basically right. between That's Iowa and, and, yeah. and uh, Augusta. <laughs> Two blocks west. And we're moving to Indiana, though, in the next semi so Are you going to do Logan? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Are you down in some fun or something? No, actually, Sonora. Have you been there? Yeah, of course. Oh. Stop and visit. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there for seven years. My records would be twenty. Yeah. And we had a spot at Sonora yeah. until six. Which is yeah. Yeah. I don't really, you know, yeah. I don't really. Because we're going that seventy five miles to Sonora. Eleven one four. Like I could be in a place that's three o'clock on one day afternoon. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I've just, I've just been down there for the Montrose. For the place you need to do the Montrose. Yeah, but it's not too bad. That's the landmark for us. They also have a large size. Everybody knows they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.